Hello everyone, I welcome you all to this physics tutorial series of class 11. I am following the textbook of physics part 1. So in this video, we will solve the problem number 2.8 from the chapter number 2. So in this problem, we are given that answer the following. You are given a thread and a meter scale. So we are given with an object that is the thread and we are given with a measuring instrument that is a meter scale. How will you estimate the diameter of the thread? So we cannot directly measure the thread diameter because suppose the thread diameter will be in the suppose point of sub uh, millimeter but the list count of the meter scale is one millimeter but the thread diameter will be of the order of suppose 10 to the power minus 2 or 10 to the power minus 1 millimeter okay so in this way we cannot directly measure but we can adapt some techniques so let me write down here the answer of the first part that means in this problem we have to explain how we can measure suppose we are given with this meter scale it has some division of suppose scale like this so a thread is this much of width so we cannot directly measure so what we can do so if we wind this thread on the meter scale a number of times so that the turns are closely touching the each other suppose we are now the thread is wind upon the scale okay like this very closely so in one division so this is the one division so in this division we have suppose length is small l and if we count the number of times from here to here the number of times the thread is wind upon so from that we can say or for from that we can estimate the diameter of the thread so here we can write the thread diameter cannot be measured directly so we can adapt some technique let me write down here so so if we wind the thread on the meter scale a number of times so that the turns are closely touching each other that means if this is one turn next turn will touch this first turn okay the third turn will uh, touch the second turn so in this way we have to wind the scale so after winding the diameter of the thread can be measured using using one simple formula so therefore we can write here diameter of the thread is equal to so what will be the diameter of the thread so the we have to divide the length of the coiled part divided by the number of turns so using this formula we can find out the diameter of the thread okay now let us go to our second part of the problem in the second part of the problem we have a screw gauge has a pitch of one millimeter so this is the pitch given one millimeter and 200 divisions on the circular scale i hope you are familiar with the screw gauge it has a linear scale as well as a circular scale so in the linear scale it has a pitch of one millimeter and in the circular scale we have 200 divisions do you think it is possible to increase the accuracy of the screw gauge arbitrarily by increasing the number of divisions of the circular scale yes of course using the or increasing the number of divisions in the circular scale we can decrease or we can lower the list count of the screw gauge so if we lower the list count of the screw gauge then we can have better accuracy or we can have a better or precise reading so here we can write list count of the screw gauge this is equal to pitch so pitch is the linear scale lowest division okay divided by the number of divisions on the circular scale number of divisions on the circular scale okay so using this formula we can find out the list count of the screw gauge so if we increase the number of divisions the list count can be lowered or it can be uh, or we can have a lower list count for the screw gauge hence the accuracy can be increased but 
theoretically this is true theoretically this is true that we can increase the accuracy of the device by increasing the number of divisions of the scale but the maximum division is limited by the resolution of the human eye so if we keep on increasing the number of divisions in the circular scale at one point we, are, we will be unable to identify two separate divisions because of the resolution limit of the human eye okay so let me write down here so if we increase the divisions the least count can be lowered from this formula we can say increasing the number of divisions it is in the denominator part okay so if we increase this number then the least count of the screw gauge will decrease hence we can have a better or accurate measurement than the previous one after the after increasing the number of divisions in the circular scale now again we can say that this theoretically we can increase the accuracy of the device by increasing the number of divisions of the circular scale however what do you understand by resolution of human eye the smallest object the human eye can separate or identify properly okay it is the resolution of the human eye so if we keep on increasing the number of divisions in the circular scale at one point we will be unable to identify the divisions with the naked human eye so so we can say that the total number of divisions in the circular scale is limited by the resolution of the human eye so in the third part of the problem we have the diameter of a thin brass rod is to be measured by vernier clippers why is a set of hundred measurements of the diameter is expected to yield more reliable estimate than the set of five measurements okay that means we have a thin brass rod we have to measure the thickness so if we suppose measure five times suppose the accurate or the accurate thickness of this uh, brass rod is suppose 0.5 millimeter suppose this is the accurate thickness this is the suppose correct value so while doing the measurement suppose we have five observations so what will have suppose 0 0.4 0 0.4 0 0.5 0 0.4 suppose we have another experiment 0 0.3 so in this case we can see that one is only the accurate value all the other values are on the negative side of this scale or of this result so in this case we can say that in five number of observations we can have a suppose deviation from the actual value or the true value of the measurement but if we do hundred number of times the same measurement then the probability of the negative random error is equal to the positive random error so in that case we will get a more reliable value so here we can write it as here i have written suppose in the case of 100 times measurement the probability of making human error the probability of making positive random error is equal to the probability of the making negative random error therefore we can say that in case of large number of measurements such as 100 times we will get a more reliable value okay so this is the solution of the problem number 2.8 Thank you for watching if you have any question please put it in the comment section below also like share and subscribe to my channel thank you